Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to be sharing mosaics that I make in my studio. But before I get into that, if you are a fan of mosaics and the mosaic making process, and you'd like to learn tips and tricks along the way, then you have come to the right place. If it is of interest to you, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss a video. Now on to the mosaics. Here's where I left off on my sunflower mosaic. I'm gonna work on finishing this one first and then I'll move to that one before I start on the background. mosaic into the classroom this week to work on it while I'm teaching my students. I'll be there for about nine or ten hours so I expect to get pretty far on this and then when I don't finish I will work on the next day. But this center part I want to get done before I go to class because it's a little bit more intensive and I, I, I don't think I could teach and work on it at the same time. So first off I have cut a piece of quarter inch go board uh, just to make this middle part raised to give it some dimension. But I don't like this sharp cutoff right there. And so I'm going to be using epoxy sculpt on the top, but instead of putting solid epoxy sculpt there at a 45 degree angle or angling that down, I'm going to put a layer of crumpled up foil there. I'm gonna use hot glue to hold that in place. The hot glue is just a temporary thing. The epoxy will eventually be holding it completely in place. So I took a piece of foil about yay wide, maybe six inches or so, and I fold it over several times, start to really crimp it down, and then I stick it in that little groove and angle it as much as possible. The final epoxy on top of it will be what gives it its shape. And what's cool about this is I can just cut this however big I need it to be. So I just push it down like that. <clears throat> so I'll be gluing all those in place and then I'm gonna start putting these bigger black beads around the outside for the seeds. On the inside, I have these small multicolored beads. This really cool amber cabochon that I found at Hobby Lobby will be put in the center, like so, with the smaller beads around it. It came in a bag with a whole bunch for like $5. So I'm set on these cabochons. I have tons of them. 
and I'm just going to be using one on this project. That's it. Here I'm using the end of a tool to just crimp down the foil. of glass sticking out. Making the little yellow pieces out of these rods and this filati that I have. I'm not sure if I'll have enough, so if I don't have enough when I cut this up, I, I do have some smalty here so I can cut the smalty up to use as well. That's it. here. Last one. Alright, here it is all together. Woo! This one was really big. Was a little more foreshortened. This one is pretty full on also. So it's up next. All right, so I'm gonna start by looking at my reference photo again. And first thing I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit so we can see this. There we go. Uh, this one has a lot of orange up here and some midtones and a brighter part over here. But this flower also had its brighter part over here and I want this one to recede a little bit. So I will probably tone down this edge and just have it brighter on this side. That's a little bit of artistic license there. 
That's it. My sorting system worked really well. And uh, I don't need any more of this brown, but I do need some more yellows and oranges. So I'll cut up some more and then I'll start on this third sunflower. about six or seven different red shades of glass in this royal velvet sunflower so as I move into each color I sort of want an even distribution and that is why I am building up each petal slowly and spinning it and the lazy Susan really helps with that and makes it nice and smooth as I turn it around
purposefully left a big gap between the different petals so that will be filled with grout and be a nice grout river to distinguish between the petals. And I'm planning on using black grout tomorrow after my, well, bond dries for 24 hours. That's it. All right, it's the next day. I'm about to grout and I have mixed my grout and it has, I've let it slake. So now I'm gonna give it a stir and get after it. One way to work on this would be to tape it off, but I don't like to tape things off if I don't have to. If I can just be careful when I am putting the grout right up close to the glass pebbles, then uh, it won't be a problem. I can also clean them off and the grout will come off, uh, off pretty easily. I did put the epoxy right up against the glass, so there's no gap between the glass and the epoxy that I have to fill with grout. It's just the pieces leading up to it. So I just very carefully do that part by hand and the rest I use this spreader. this where a little bit of the base is showing and I don't want that white to pop and so I'm, I press by hand I go through and press grout into all of those crevices all the way around. At this point I have spun it around a couple times making sure that there's grout on all the edges and in all of the crevices and cracks and all around the glass that's in the middle. And so this is sort of the worst it's going to be. From this point on, I will just be cleaning it off. And I use this tool as sort of a squeegee in the first step to get as much excess grout off as possible. All the time I am inspecting to see if there's any grout that may have been pulled out of one of the interstices. I do have some textured glass on here. It takes a little bit of extra care cleaning up. Color's starting to come through. After I've gone over it with the squeegee or this finishing rubber, I then go to paper towels and I wipe it off one more time before I have to let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes before I can clean it again. That's the hardest part for me is not touching it and waiting for it to dry up a little bit and haze over. project is 99% clean. So now it is time to go into each section with a pick and some sharp tools and scrape just to uncover the last bits of glass that may remain covered by grout. And I actually started here, so I'm marking that one since this is a going round and round just to make sure I know where I started. completely grouted and cleaned up and I want to paint the edges. So before I do, I'm just propping it up on top of that bowl so that I can get in the edges and it won't touch the Lazy Susan I have it on. The paint that I'm using is this black semi-gloss for interior. Uh, it would probably be better if I had uh, something that was flat, but uh, I don't, I have this. So this is the one that I'll use. I just want those sides to receive.
it took me much longer than I thought because it's, it's pretty big and these cups are small, but the payoff is big because this thing is so sparkly. I love it. Can't get enough of all the gorgeous sparkle. There's a little bit of iridized, but it's mostly just regular glass and there's a little bit of textured glass and that's about it. That's where I left off on these big sunflowers. Unfortunately, I didn't finish. I think I must have been working on it in my dreams because I thought I got more finished. But no little elves came and worked on it while I was sleeping, I guess. So I'll have to pick it up next week. That's it. That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.